It's the next level. <laughs> yep. Definitely pregnant. Oh. Well, that much we figured. It's just kind of taken us by surprise, just kind of suddenly, quite suddenly, wasn't it? I mean, practically overnight. I mean, we, we, how did this happen? You see, when a man and a woman love each other very much... Well, we're just tickled pink. Or blue. You're at about four months now, is that right? <laughs> Hey, welcome back to the show, panelers. I'm Mark. And I'm Steve. And this is a spoiler-filled episode of Season 1, Episode 3 of WandaVision. So, uh, Steve, take it away as far as uh, what this episode's about. Absolutely, absolutely. I love that we finally have episode titles. So this is uh, Episode 3, Now in Color. And just a short little quick synopsis. Uh, that's Wanda's pregnancy fritzes her powers as she envisioned prepare for an accelerated delivery. <laughs> yeah short sweet to the point <laughs> yeah definitely <laughs> for the fact that we we finally get episodes for this episode mm -hmm. i'm so happy <laughs> yeah because the when we covered the first two episodes we got nothing yeah they were kind of blank it was just episode one episode two and i i like the 70s look and the brady house as an interior plus we get the astroturf grass outside in the backyard <laughs> like the brady's house but there's so many other anomalies going on within the 70s theme within this particular episode that we'll get into later absolutely i i really love that that i called it last week i i i mentioned i think i mentioned love american style that tv show from the 70s and sure enough that's exactly what there was that opening theme was in the same style as love american style i uh i actually looked it up and and it is i mean it's similar to the brady bunch opening as well but the brady bunch didn't have lines around no the boxes and love american style did and did yep. this did those things with on the side and so i thought that was really really cool and the the uh the theme song was real very love american style type of theme song so i was really i was kind of proud of myself for that so yeah it was very similar so it's like it didn't have love the american yeah. style <laughs> red white and blue right and they would have all the boxes and everything cool uh i'm sorry we're showing our age uh <laughs> <laughs> but you know i i grew up on that you grew up on that too and mm -hmm. we all knew that and a lot of people well, pro I, I'm hoping that millennials, zennials, or whoever is watching the show will actually go back and look at those shows because they're available now. Mm. So that would be cool if they actually do that and see the comparison to this particular show. It would be amazing. But with that, we're, we're just going to move on into our highlights or our top fives of the uh, WandaVision Season 1, Episode 3, and this time in color. <laughs> or now in color, I should say. Yes. <laughs> well, Dr. Nielsen, I hope you're still able to make your trip. Ah, yes, my trip. I don't think we'll get away after all. Small towns, you know, so hard to escape. <laughs> So do you want to start or self or shot? Sure. I, it, either way, uh, I can start. Um, I loved the whole doctor kind of starting to explain the birds and the bees <laughs> to them. He's like, when a man loves a woman, and, and they're like, no, no, no. And just how condescending he was. And he was very much, it was, it was definitely of all, the age. Yeah, yeah. Of that seventies type of stuff. And he's, you know, he's very condescending to Wanda when he's taken to her uh, about her pregnancy. And we, we describe it like fruit and, you know, um, <laughs> <laughs> but then, of course, he has that really ominous line towards the end of the episode with Vision where he says uh, – I think I've got the actual quote down below. But he basically says that you can't get out of this small town or you're never getting out of this small town. Uh, so it, but really, really one of those – there was a, a really great balance between the humor and that – that uh, kind of weird ominousness yeah. of the episode. So I was, I was really happy about it. Um, but I can see how some people would have some issues. Yeah, I – 
that that whole thing i actually had that in my notes about how the doctor said you can never get out of this and mm-hmm. this whole thing it was like a, kind of an awareness and we'll get into that later but the first thing that hit me was vision speed diapering on that doll the nervousness of him with the expecting baby especially with the calculation of when it will come it'll be uh friday afternoon yeah uh, and then you know it, and that was way off yeah well he's i didn't take into account the blah 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 whatever i can't remember exactly how he said it but he was like <laughs> even he was like you could see that he was even getting kind of uh frazzled there so I, I love that too because that leads right into to my number four, which is vision. Is we're finally we finally get some response from him about yeah. realizing that something is wrong. I mean, I, I said that in the first two episodes, it seemed like he was oblivious to this strange world that Wanda was the only one who saw the the strangeness around them. But here, you know, he sees Herb cutting the the cement wall, and even when he tells <laughs> him about it, Herb doesn't stop. <laughs> But it was it was funny too, though, when he had that little discussion. There's that moment. There's a little blip when when he does start to realize something's wrong. There's like a little blip, and we get another rewind, like what we had last episode, of him repeating something. And in, but instead of saying, you know, there's something weird going on here, he comes back with, "Well, these are unprecedented times," you know. Yeah. So I thought that was really, really interesting that, that, uh, so it's kind of, I'm still really curious about this, whether he's, you know, whether they're trapped in something. And I'm sure we'll talk some more about that because with the end, the way it ended. Well, this is kind of out of context of mine, but we'll get into where you were talking because that actually, I, I could actually I'll, I'll add on to the whole herb thing. It, it's pretty funny too because he was hedging clips and then when, mm-hmm. you know, Vision actually, approaches him about it he he's like oh ha 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 and he's still cutting into it <laughs> mind you you do realize you know it, it's kind of foam rubber that he's cutting into with this hedge clipper but they're putting in the sparks of the uh you know of the hedge clipper going through the brick <laughs> right yeah but uh, the thing is is that we know this isn't reality and that's the whole point point. and i enjoy that aspect of it but you know when when i get into my notes later on about herb and agnes when he approaches them Mm-hmm. It's v- a very interesting and twisting tale. Yeah. But uh, my fourth one goes a little bit out of perspective of like a uh, uh, consecutive top four or top five mm-hmm. of what we have. So my fourth one is Geraldine talking about Pietro after mm. Wanda mentioned that she was a twin. Geraldine mentioned that he was killed by Ultron, which sets wanda off she talks about her brother initially which really triggers that whole thing with that the conversation with geraldine but then realizes that someone got in her world from the outside and how she dispatches geraldine and realizes the necklace she was wearing was a sword emblem because you you we concentrate on that Mm -hmm. so it it seems like there are outside forces and i'm going to dip into my notes about this because They state, Herb and Agnes states that she doesn't have a house. She doesn't have any place to live. Mm -hmm. So basically, she just comes in whenever convenient. So it makes me think that maybe Agnes and Herb are trapped in this world and are aware of it. And that, you know, this is what Wanda is concocting in her own world and her own power, as it were. Because at that very end, and obviously listeners this is spoil spoiler filled so you you're gonna get like a ton of stuff at the very end we see this big whole concoction of like this massive landscape being engulfed mm-hmm. by like uh what fencing and, yeah and a building and everything else well and the, the cars the cars that approach her are more modern day cars the westview sign yes. is a is a more modern westview sign so you know something has definitely happened to this town whether whether sword has has taken it over or whether wanda's powers have taken it over uh but you know Geraldine was my number 1 and I thought it was there's a whole lot going on there yeah with with her and because remember uh, it's it's funny because when Herb and Agnes are talking to Vision, mm-hmm. Agnes describes Geraldine as a strong lady because she does she's here with no family and she doesn't have you know all this and she's single and and she says she's a strong lady and that cuts right to Wanda and Geraldine and Geraldine telling Wanda that she's a strong lady and 
and that's when the whole thing happens and, and Wanda uh, tells her to leave and get out and we see her get thrown out of whatever is surrounding this town, whether it's a, you know, it's a bubble or a force shield or, or yeah. something, you know, we see, uh, we see her get thrown out and she lands on the ground and she's still looking in that seventies kind of attire. Look. Yeah. But the people that are approaching her are definitely more modern, modern. day. Yeah. So I, you know, I don't know if, if, like you said, if, if she, you know, we're, we have to get more information. We just don't have enough information to determine how did she get in there? You know, did Wanda let, has, has everyone, is everyone in there someone that Wanda has pulled in there or is yeah. this something that's been created to contain Wanda? I don't know. That's, um, well, like I stated before in the, when we covered the last two episodes, this is leading up to Dr. Strange and the multiverse of madness movie. Mm -hmm. So obviously Wanda is a huge part of that particular movie because it throws the whole Marvel Cinematic Universe into out of whack. It just creates everything. Now, there are people that speculate there is this whole thing of the House of M. And in the comic book series in Marvel, the House of M regarded where Wanda says no more mutants. But I think in this particular world there are mutants and she creates them yeah but that's what i'm saying it's 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 hard for me because i don't know the comics at all i know i know and and so it's it's interesting when you when you bring those things up because there's there's certainly elements that they can bring into the series and into the the bigger mcu that are not from the comics exactly you know? and because and so everything that we would say is just speculation if you pull out something from the comics and go well this happened in this way in the comics yeah. It's not necessarily – they're not necessarily going to do it that way in the MCU. Yeah, you know? they could they, so. they could change it to whatever they want. For the longest time, we knew that Wanda and Pietro, of all things, that you know she brought up within this particular episode mm -hmm. were enhanced. That's what they called them, were enhanced people. Right. That was in Ultron. In, in Ultron. In Age of Ultron, right? Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So, so – Listeners, if you haven't watched Age of Ultron, do so and then start watching the – the first three episodes again to get an idea of where Wanda and Pietro were. And then you'll figure out it's like, oh, okay. Because if you're interested in comics and you're going to go back in and look into it, Pietro and Wanda in the comic book series were uh, the daughter and son of Magneto, who was a big supreme mutant. He was a superior mutant. And uh, along with Professor X. But the thing is, in within the series, we only have them as two siblings that were in Sokovia that were quote-unquote enhanced. Mm -hmm. So they might be manipulating what's going on to be kind of mimicking or altering the whole cinematic universe to reflect a little bit. I'm not saying a big bunch, but a little bit to the comic book series so that to placate to, you know, me who is like a uh, comic book fan, but also to give a little bit more where we can have mutants. Like we could have Wolverine, we could have Professor X, we have Cyclops, we have Jean Grey, Bobby, who is the Iceman or, you know, Beast. And we could have all these characters now. And eventually we will be getting those within the MCU. So I think this is the new iteration of where they're going to create this so that way we could actually have those characters because all we had before the mcu at that point was the fox version of what the x-men were or mutants and that was their version and disney has bought that out or marvel disney has bought that out so now we have a way of bringing them into this fold and i think that's their way of like okay well we can manipulate and alter this universe to bring those into this fold. So I'm thinking, but I'm also thinking that Wanda is very much, very strong with her powers. And this is kind of where S.W.O.R.D. comes in. And I brought it, I, I think I brought it up last episode when we, we talked about the first two episodes of what S.W.O.R.D. stood for. And, you know, where it was uh, uh, instead of sentient world observation, reconnaissance, or whatever. This is uh, sentient worlds. Uh, I, I, I'm forgetting, but yeah. You know. I, well, here's the thing, though. Is that is that from the comics? Is that from Agents of Shield, or is that from because we haven't actually seen Sword in the MCU yet? We haven't heard, or no. is that what? So we don't really know at this point any any acronym words we give to it. They could completely. 
do Change something it. different. Yeah, you know what it saying? is true. That's, that's what I'm saying. We haven't actually heard sword. I mean, we've seen the emblem, but we, we haven't actually heard what the acronym stands for. Now, we know in the comics, right, that mm-hmm. that was the next iteration after S.H.I.E.L.D. got disbanded. Yes, it was. That so, and there, that was definitely going that direction from uh, Spider-Man, mm-hmm. right? And yeah. The, the last one where they had uh, – where we found out that the scroll was pretending to be – was that Captain Marvel or – Yeah, Captain Marvel. Yeah. yeah. But anyway, anyway, so there's a whole – this is such a huge uh, universe and world that we just have to trust that as they're doling it out to us, we'll, mm-hmm. we'll learn more and more. And it's just – it's, you know, it's, it's really great theories. Don't get me wrong. Oh, yeah. And they could, they could turn out to be true, but a lot of it uh, – it's all this, speculation. Exactly. Until we get, until we actually get it revealed, and <laughs> and uh, it's it's just going to be speculation and everything. But we'll we'll move on to the actual so, show itself. Yeah. So that way we know <laughs> what's going on yeah. within the show itself. So uh, I absolutely loved the the whole Calgon uh, take me away type commercial with oh, the, yeah. the mom and the bubble bath <laughs> and, and all that. And then I love how it, what was it called Hydro Soak? Yeah. Um, you Hydro know, soap. So I thought I thought that was that was really cool. And uh, uh, then it, you know it cuts right to comes back to Wanda doing her blow drying thing. Her hair is blowing and and Vision is bending back. It's just I thought they did like I said earlier. I thought they did a really great job with the humor in this episode. A lot of people don't get the humor or understand what's going on because they're not really familiar with the MCU or even the comics. So yeah. a, a lot of people are split at this point. Uh, and I know some people are turned off by the different sitcom type elements that, yes. they're, that they're seeing as tropey and, oh, that's oh, so outdated. Well, that's the point. It's it, the point of it is that it's outdated. You yes. know, it's that's the whole I mean, it just it, it blows my mind when I read people's comments like that going, oh, I can't believe it's so outdated and this and that. It, it's <laughs> meant to be. It's it's you know, you can call it a homage. You can call it, you know, whatever you want. But they're they're tr- they're specifically trying to do that. They're, so it's not like specifically they, doing it. Yeah. Yeah. And it's it, so it's not like it just well, that frustrates me when that's the thing that people are turned off by. You're turned off by the specific thing that the that the show is about. Well, that's fine. That's your opinion. You're allowed to have it. Everybody's allowed to have that. That's the whole thing. Yeah. But a lot of people don't realize is also that people like me or yourself, that we look into that and know and understand the whole cinematic universe as it is. This is probably, and I mentioned it last podcast where, you know, with Wanda, she, she growing up in a European country where all they had was American television. This is probably everything that she thought that what real America was. Oh, yeah. And oh, it's, that's and, a great thought. Yeah. Yeah, and and this is what and this is her go to for feeling comfortable, mm-hmm. and I I really think that's what's going on within her mind. It's like to ease her own mind, but she doesn't. She's not aware of what's going on in the real world. Yeah, again, so, that's that's more that speculation. But, that's more speculation. Know, it's it's it, what I love is it's really brilliant writers that are are doing this because each each show so far has been a different decade of yes. sitcom. <laughs> and, I love and, it. and so it, it shows that there's that they're stretching that. And so I can't wait until we get, you know, further along um, and see where it takes us into new uh, and, and different levels of, of sitcom. So I'm, I'm yeah, I, I'm I'm in, man. I, I know people are turned off by it, but that's you know. hey, 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 you, you have to realize it's like a lot of people, you know, some people are going to get hip to it or some mm-hmm. people are just not into it and i understand that completely and, and if you listeners are out there and you want to send feedback and how you felt do so please we'll leave that at the very end but with my number three i i felt it like it was something out of rosemary's baby when wanda was going through those contractions during birth at that point you know everything is going so wacky the picture spinning and the mm-hmm. ceiling lamp falling down that was a really cool thing. I thought. I thought it was. Yeah. It was pretty funny, and it it catered to the characters, catered to the actual what's going on within the episode, and and the fact that you know it's like you know, Vision mentions. He goes, "Well, how long does it take for what what fruit would it be after twelve hours?" You know <laughs> those things. You know it, it was pretty funny how fast it went. It was so quick. It was so mm-hmm. cool. Yeah, yeah, I love that. that her, all of her powers kind of go, and the, the stork appearing out of nowhere and just wandering around uh, in the background there when she's talking to Geraldine, and uh, her the way her coat was changing. Yep, 
<laughs> during the contractions was was hilarious raincoat and, at one point <laughs> yeah raincoat and then she's got a fur she kind of strokes it like she oh i like this one you know and <laughs> it was really really cool just all the stuff with her powers i love the i think my water just broke and the whole house is just flooded yep, you know? yeah the rain and, symbolizes that whole th- yeah. situation it's like oh my water broke water yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah i just i i loved it and like i said i already mentioned the stork uh you know kind of prancing around I love how it there. stops as soon as Geraldine walks into the room, and it's, yeah. it's as if it's part of the wall as a as like some sort yeah. of painting. <laughs> yeah. Well, it was because that's what she had painted. That's what uh, Wanda had painted on yeah. the wall was a stork. So I thought that was kind of cool and uh, all that. So yeah, yeah. Uh, it just it, like I said, I just really love the humor in this. A lot of the humor in this one. Uh, so where are we? <laughs> You're number two. I did my number two because I talked about Wanda's. Oh, all powers. right. Then that's down to my number two, I guess. Yeah. You know, that would be Agnes and her talking to one another. Mm -hmm. Agnes is uh, very curious about Geraldine and her talking to Vision about that. And they go into the whole, and I'm dipping into my notes at this point, Mm -hmm. where it's like, you know, she stated to Vision going, hey, um, she doesn't have a house. She doesn't have a home. What do you mean? And even Vision didn't understand it. And there was something that were they were both withholding. They were withholding some sort of information as if they were either A, trapped there or put there. Yeah, it's it was definitely a... a, a- uh, we're definitely have to learn more about it because I couldn't tell if she was trying to get information out of Vision or if she was trying to just give him information. And then, of course, you you have it mentioned in your notes about Herb saying, starting to say something about that she were we are all here or yep. something like that. And then she stops him yes. and tells him to stop talking. And so that we know that she has some sort of control over what's going on in here. She she must, because she pops in it, the way she pops in and out. Oh, it makes me think about that, f- uh, what was that episode in the Twilight Zone, the movie with the kid, where he can controls the whole world around him and everybody's afraid of him. Yeah, but I like I said, I don't know if that's necessarily, I, I get it and I get that it's definitely reminiscent of that, that if that's, if they're trying to keep Wanda from going out of control, but I just, there's more to Agnes's character is all I'm saying. Oh, I kind of like I what think, I was saying before, like the, the last episode when we mm-hmm. talked the first two. Yeah. Uh, like I said, there was references towards Agnes being, and they do originally when this first was presented about two months ago that Catherine Hahn was listed as being Agatha Harkness. Right. Right. And so Ag- I, I yeah. definitely think that she's got there's she's involved somehow. To some there's, degree. There's more to her. She knows more than about what's going on. Which which leads me to uh the the one thing we got a sneak peek months ago, I would say during the summer. Mm-hmm. When you do see Vision walk up to her car, she's dressed up as a witch mm-hmm. for, I, I guess, for Halloween or something. And he's dressed up as old Vision, like the right. like the comic book one. And she goes, oh, but you're dead. Yeah, I and, remember. And, it's, and then she laughs cackling. And, and we haven't he, seen that yet in this series. We have series, not seen so. it yet. Yeah. So it, it makes me think it's like she is more aware, but she has something to do with what's going on mm-hmm. to some degree. I don't know. Yeah. But, so yeah. we've already talked about, really talked about my number one, which was mm-hmm. Geraldine. But we'll talk a little bit more about Geraldine because I, I really, you and I were talking a little bit before we started recording sure. a, about the setup with this character of Geraldine. Mm-hmm. And when I went to IMDb and looked at, and I know IMDb is not the most uh, credible source out no. there, listeners. So if you're you're like, don't no, no, no look at IMDb, yeah, whatever. <laughs> but. Originally, when they had her listed in episode three, they showed the cast and they showed her listed as Monica Rambeau, which would be the character from Captain Marvel, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, from yes. the movie that we the saw. Young the, girl kid. the young girl. The young girl. Right. Friends of-, of, of, of Captain Marvel's friend. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So uh, originally they had it. Now, if you go and look at episode three on IMDb, it just says Geraldine. But if you go to episode four, now it shows Monica Rambeau again. So I'm, I'm hoping we're going to, we're going to learn more in the next episode of what's going on outside of exactly this, this bubble, because we, we definitely know that this wor- this world of Westview, for whatever reason, we can definitely tell from the end of the episode, it's contained. It's somehow contained in some kind of a force shield 
or Wanda's powers or something because we see Geraldine get thrown out of that through the field. We see the Westview sign on the other side of that barrier is a more modern looking Westview sign than what we've seen on the show. The cars that approach her, the helicopters, they're all more modern day type stuff. So there's definitely, we can definitely see there's something going on outside of that town and that that town is somehow contained in some sort of force. And, and I, I just, I, I think, I hate to say, be, be critical of this because I like how they're, they're doing it, but mm-hmm. it, it's almost going too slow. Like they're almost, they're almost taking too much time to reveal with these are only 30 minute episodes. You've got to give us some more information. Exactly. And so if we don't, if we don't get something in the next episode that involves the outside world, <laughs> I think people are going to be disappointed because we've, we've, we've been, I'm we've already now- disappointed for the, fa- I, I think like more snippets towards the end of the episode mm-hmm. would help us a little bit more. Yeah. But I think since this was delayed and the same thing with Falcon and Winter Soldier, as well as Black Widow, mm-hmm. a lot is missing at this point because there's a lot of things to fill in those gaps that we just don't have Mm -hmm. because of everything that's going on in this world. And it really stinks, but they really wanted to get this out to the people because everybody's been dying for it. We need good television at this point. And, you know, I I think Disney at this point is trying to grasp and try to give us some sort of entertainment at this point. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I, I hate the idea. It's kind of like that whole Walking Dead thing where, oh, well, we're not finished with season 10 yet, but it took us how many months to get to the final episode? And then now we're gonna get a few, like, maybe six episodes of, uh, an extended of the new season, but we don't get... No, of season 10. Yeah. They're considered season 10 episodes. That's, that's for sure. We know that for sure. I know that. So, yeah. You know that and I know that, but the thing is, we're Originally, it was set for that one mm-hmm. final episode. Right. But the thing is, is that at least they gave us those little sneak peeks of giving us episodes in between before the true season 11 happens. But with this now, they're on a clock of where they have everything financed and they have to have these movies set forth for their story to continue. Now, they're delaying a lot of things and it really stinks for the fact that us the viewers have to wait so long in between yeah. so now we have to wait it's like uh but we'll, we'll get into that a little bit later because there. i mean some... i think we're already getting into it so but no uh, i you know it's it's yeah we need to get back to wandavision <laughs> yeah let's getting, get back into wandavision off, off track yeah so what is your number one your final uh that would be the final image of geraldine coming out of the round dimensional portal you know mm-hmm. that that was immense and the fact that we do see her being ex bulged out of that thing right you know right. she's she's thrown out there you could see the look on her face she still has that that the kind of 70s uh mm-hmm. african-american woman's fro going around right and and the heavy makeup and but yet you have all the jeeps the helicopters everything surrounding yeah, everything her we, we've talked we've talked a lot about yeah exactly already. <laughs> yeah but the thing is is that you know my feeling is what is that is that near the avengers compound we already see fencing around something that's there was that something that was created near the avengers compound because the last time we ever saw Wanda was near the Avengers compound. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I, it's been too long since I watched Endgame. I know, I know. Uh, that I don't remember <laughs> where, where she was at when she came back after the, the snap, so. Yeah. Or after they brought everybody back. I don't remember them showing. Was she, was she in that final Iron Man, that scene where they were saying goodbye? I can't remember. I have to rewatch Endgame, um, but yeah, I don't remember if, if she was there or not. I th- but yeah, I mean, at this point, we don't, we have no clue where this location is. There's exactly. No, they've not given us anything. It could I, be. I believe it's probably upstate New York somewhere. I, like I said, anything that we say is just, is just speculation. Speculation. Point, so. so if you guys have better ideas, let us know. <laughs> yeah. uh, so the only note I have that we haven't already talked about is just, I, I did think it was funny, especially the second time watching it, that, you know, babies, uh, when babies were born in sitcoms in the seventies and, and really sometimes into, into the eighties, I think maybe uh, with uh, Bill Cosby and Dr. Huxtable is really when we started to see the messiness of, babies being born oh yeah you know? and uh, so they're, they always they always came out super clean and there there's no mess and there's no blood and i just thought that was you know they, <laughs> they, they the deliveries are always very easy and uh, that was just a, a, a normal thing of sitcoms that if you had it you had a woman giving birth it was going to be just 
it was just going to happen and the baby was going to come out already in a blanket and you know <laughs> <laughs> kind of thing what uh are you talking like cousin uh no just just like babies like in in reality i've never seen a baby being born but in reality they don't oh they just not, show up they're messy they're they're messy yeah. it's bloody you have to cut things you have, well, yeah. you know it's it's whereas in tv shows especially 20 30 years ago in tv shows when babies were born it was just like oh there it is it just pops out and, and it's clean and he's clean there's nothing <laughs> nothing else we have to do just wrap him up in a, in a in a towel or in a blanket and and go on about the business you know <laughs> Yeah, it's pretty funny how it's like, you know, Eve Vision is there holding the baby and it's mm -hmm. all clean and proper. And then she goes to give her a kiss and then she screams in his face. <laughs> yeah, when the second one's coming out. Yeah. 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 But, you know, it's like even still the, the second baby is just as clean. Right. So, yeah, yeah it's pretty funny. It's like uh, movie magic or TV magic, exactly. as it were. Exactly. Nothing wrong with that. Well, uh, part of my notes would be the, the montage in the beginning. I thought it was pretty cool. I enjoyed it. But why so many burgers for two people, Vision? Come on. You don't eat. <laughs> you know? <laughs> and the next one, you already brought it up. Uh, the doctor stating that he can't leave. Yeah. It's kind of like the Truman Show. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's like he knew something. Last bit would be Herb's cutting the hedges, but you already talked about it. Right. We already talked about that a lot. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, we're not going to go into that. But, uh, yeah, there, there's so many aspects about this. And I'm sure all you listeners have the same thoughts and same views. And, mm -hmm. you know, uh, and you just want to be like, we want to talk about this. <laughs> so we should talk about it soon. Yeah. With that, we should move on to quotes. Sure. All right. Uh, you want to start off? Sure. I, uh, I when uh, right before the power went out, we see uh, Phil, and I think that was Dottie, and, and and she says, "Phil, do these earrings make me look fat?" <laughs> I just, as soon as the power goes out, he was like, Whew. "Like you didn't have to answer that question." <laughs> yeah, you gotta love that. Who was that? That was. Um... I think that was Phil and Dottie. I think I, I think Phil that's and Dottie. Her. It was yeah. Dottie. Yeah. yeah. We 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 mentioned her. Emma Caulfield. Yeah. Emma Caulfield. Yep. That's mm -hmm. it. Yep. Yeah, at least we know she's okay. She didn't really hurt. You know, her hand wasn't hurt so bad. Yeah. <laughs> from last episode. My first one would be from Wanda. I said, I think this line of questioning is fruitless. Yeah. And that was from the, <laughs> you know, due to the doctor equating everything within birth due to being fruits and different yeah. sizes of fruits. So I thought that was yeah. cool. Uh, and then we've already, we've been talking about it, but the exact quote from the doctor there at the end is, small towns, so hard to escape, is, is what he says. Yeah, which is foreboding, if you think mm -hmm. of it, or foreshadowing at this point. So we'll find out later on. The last one I would have would be Vision saying, I can't wait to be a proud papaya. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Instead of papaya. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, there was no feedback this week, but in regular news, I would like to highly recommend anyone who is a Norman Reedus fan or Walking Dead fan to pick up his big, bold gallery the art of norman reedus and it can be found on his website bigbaldgallery.com with that all the profits from this book are currently being donated to the covid19 relief fund so if you have any money to spare and enjoy his artwork i recommend it highly uh i bought one it was 150 dollars, but i do enjoy norman's artwork with that when you do purchase the book you get an autographed 8x10 within it hmm. by Norman and there is somebody in the book that played a whisperer as well who actually just friended me on Facebook of all things too hmm. so I, I mentioned him that we uh, would recommend the book and everything else so I recommend if you could go to bigboldgallery.com and just if you have the money like I said I know everybody's fixed for money and everything but Big Bold Gallery and the art of Norman Reedus and it's uh, Art in the Woods. So it, it's a pretty decent book. They have a cheaper version. You could get that. You don't get the 8x10. But, you know, all the proceeds go to the COVID-19 Relief Fund. So do that if you can. So with that, we're going to move into a little bit of comic news. So I mentioned before, kind of alluded to it, Shang-Chi is apparently going to be on Disney Plus as well as in the theaters. I think Disney is thinking ahead at this point, so there's still talk about Black Widow coming to Disney Plus as well as a same-day release within the theaters because they have to make that money back, everybody. Ladies and gentlemen, everybody has to make money, and if they 
people are not going to the theaters, they're not going to be able to make these movies. So they're kind of riding on what's left of their money or what's coming from within Disney+. Plus. So the more Disney Plus subscribers, the more that they could actually do these movies. But it's kind of hard within what's going on in today's events. So, you know, if where they used to make billions upon billions of dollars with the movies being in the theaters, we're not making that. We're not seeing that. Movie theaters are not, you know, a lot of places are not open. So if you're able to go out to the theater, do so. If you feel the need that you have to watch these movies on uh, Disney Plus or whatever streaming app you can, do so. But support them as much as you can because without them, we wouldn't have the entertainment that we have from these companies. So, you know, just move along and just uh, try to do your best to uh, help these people give the uh, entertainment that we need. I agree. Totally. Yeah. Also, before we get into podcast recommendations, both you and I actually sent into TV podcast industries and I got to listen to it. <laughs> oh, nice. I haven't listened to it yet. Yeah. Uh, I thought it was pretty cool. I haven't listened to this this uh, this one yet. So uh, the, the it was for the second episode. I oh, did okay. for the first two. Oh, yeah. Yeah. But uh, I, I had mentioned that Clint Barton was a possible uh, voice that was on the radio. Mm hmm. I was thinking ahead, and I'm thinking maybe it was Agent Jimmy Wu from a uh, former S.H.I.E.L.D. agent who was recruited into the FBI that we saw in Ant-Man and the Wasp. Remember, he used to, he came Yeah, we out. talked about this. We talked about this last week. Yeah. yeah. So I, I'm thinking it might be him. That might be the voice of uh, who's on the radio still more so now because yeah. I got to rewatch the episode, and I got to really think about it, and I'm like, wow, that sounds like more like Jimmy Wu. That would be amazing, though. But, you know, uh, if you guys have any ideas, let us know because, uh, oh, man, I'm, like, it keep, I keep racking my brain. I think I watched the first three episodes twice at least already. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, and, you know, that's just another one of those things that they're just going to have to reveal to us eventually. So Yeah. So with podcast recommendations, what do you have, Steve? Uh, the only one I've got this week is Ben and Kristen are back with their We Have to Go Back Lost Revisited podcast. That's a joint podcast between the Podcasting Network and this network, the Next Level Online Network. So check out Ben and Kristen if you're a fan of Lost. If you just like listening to them, they're they're great. Awesome. Well, first one for me would be Field to Screen with Alex Baelish. And he has just started with his podcast about sports movies, you know, that are based, you know, it, it's basically sports-based you know, movies. So you can check that out. He can be found on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Pandora, and a bunch of other podcast players. So I suggest checking him out. The next one would be Daphne and Paik on Run for Your Lives. They cover monster movies, disaster movies, and all that make you want to run for your lives. So check them out on the Pyrocore Entertainment Network. The last episode that was up, uh, actually, you sent in some feedback. Mm -hmm. which was Attack the Block, and uh, I thought that was great. I have that actually on Blu-ray, that movie, and they're moving forward with, I believe, The Descent, so check that out if you can. That should be up by this time, by the time this episode comes out, so check them out. Then you got Reba and Ben, and occasionally Paik, when he comes on for The Stand review on Strange Indeed on the Podcast Network, and they are covering The Stand that is currently on CBS All Access. So I think they're on episode five. Uh, check that out if you can. So also check out Talk Through Media with their content as well with Brian, Kyle, and Ruthie, and they are still at it with the, the Star Trek Discovery and Lower Decks coverage. So check them out as well if you can. Even though I left the, the network for uh, Talk Through Media, I still do like what they're doing. So um, if you could give them a love and you're really interested in Star Trek, do so. Absolutely. Yeah. So we can be heard on Spotify, Google Play, pretty much any uh, Apple podcast, pretty much any podcast player of choice that you have out there. If you have a chance to give us a review, please do that. You can also check us out on panels to pixels podcast.com. That's our website. Our Facebook page is facebook.com slash panels to pixels. You can email us at panels to pixels one at gmail.com. Uh, it's panels to pixels one, the TO spelled out right in the middle and the number one at gmail.com. We are also on YouTube. So you can search for panels to pixels podcast uh, in there and give us a thumbs up next week we will have another episode of wandavision and we may tack on the first episode of season two of snowpiercer mm -hmm. as well which snowpiercer comes out this monday on the tnt network uh, you can uh, check that out so hopefully we'll have both those in uh, in one podcast for you next week awesome 
So where can listeners hear us? Well, uh, I can be found right here on Panels of the Pixels, as well as sending out audio feedback to other podcasts that I love that my friends do. So you can also hear me on my other podcast called Adrenaline Cinema on the Pyrocore Entertainment Network. The podcast is about those action and adventure films, pure action films, suspense films, and anything that thrills you or gets your adrenaline moving. So... You could check us out there, or like I always state, Panels to Pixels will remain on the Next Level Podcast Network, so stay tuned here, and we'll keep you up to date, or just check out the Pyrocore Entertainment Network website. Uh, and I just watch, I love watching a lot of TV, and I love hearing my own voice, apparently, so uh, I will be here <laughs> on Panels to Pixels always, and I send in uh, voicemails to various other podcasts that my friends do. Exactly. So with that, that's our coverage for WandaVision Season 1, Episode 3. I just want to thank everyone for listening. I'm Mark. And I'm Steve. And this was Panels to Pixels, and we'll see you on the next panel. Good night, everybody. <laughs>